Hello there. In a previous Java shot, we looked at switch expressions and arrow labels from Java 14 and they helped in writing concise and safer switch code. And in this Java shot, we are going to look at yet another wonderful addition, but this time it is from Java 16 and it also helps in creating concise and safer code. We are going to look at records which help in modeling concise and immutable data carrier classes or simply data classes. Data carrier classes as the name suggests simply carry some data that is some state and data carrier classes are all about state and nothing but state which means that typically they do not include any behavior too that is no other methods and data transfer objects are good examples of data carrier classes. Typically data carrier classes are also immutable which means that their objects once initialized their state cannot be changed. Immutability brings along the safety advantage too because immutable objects are threat safe and they can also help preserve class invariance. Now before Java 16 we had to write a lot of boilerplate code in order to create data carrier classes. Here is an example of a traditional data carrier class. It's named as student and it has to be immutable and hence is declared as final because immutable classes should not be extendable. And here is the state ID name and department because the state should not be changed. We also declare them as final and there is the constructor and there are three accessor methods for the three fields and there are no setter methods because it is an immutable class we shouldn't mutate the state and there are also the three object methods that have been auto created in my eclipse ide hash code equals and the much important two string method okay so these are auto created and they are all dependent on these three instance variables and this class has around 70 lines of code Although most of it, except for the variables, have been auto-created from the source here using the auto-creation options. But just to represent some state, we are creating a lot of boilerplate code. All we need is those three instance variables where we are going to store some values. But that's a lot of code. And moreover, it does not easily convey that it is a data carrier class. So one has to look at the entire file scan the file in order to know that it's a data class. Moreover, if we want to extend the state, that is if we want to add a new instance variable, then we need to ensure that we are also recreating the object methods, otherwise they would go stale. So those are some important limitations of traditional data carrier classes and records address those limitations. So let's go ahead and create a record. So just right click here, new, and there is an option here called record. Okay, so let's name it as student record. So there is no name clash and that's it. So that's the keyword record followed by the record name followed by parenthesis where we define the state. And in this case, we would just take these three variables here. That would be our state here. That's it. That's a record. And in parenthesis, what we have is together they are called as a header or a record descriptor and each of those parameters in there is referred to as a record component. Now we can instantiate this record and we can pass our state. As you can see, it's a single line of declaration and typically this could be the case also. And we are saying that it's a record class, that it is a class, which means that the compiler is going to implicitly create a class for this, which looks very much similar to our student class. So it would be just like this and corresponding to these record components, it's going to create these three instance variables and it's going to create all of these things that we see here, the, para, the constructor and it will initialize the state and it will also create the accessor methods. It's just that the accessor methods will have the same name as the instance variables, the ID, name and department. And that's how it should be when there are no setter methods. So that's the convention and all the object methods will also be auto created. The only thing is the class that gets created extends another class called record, which is a new class. It's an abstract class from the java.lang package. And it also has 
the object methods as abstract methods, the hash code equals other two string method. That mandates this implicitly created class to provide the implementations for that. So this record is all about this state and in case if we want to extend this state and if we want to add a new variable like let's say gender then we can just add a new component and the compiler will auto create our will recreate our uh, student record class and the object methods will also factor in the new state and we cannot add any instance variables here and we can have constructors and static methods and other things but let me add a static method here main method so we are instantiating the student record and passing some state and invoking the name here. So when we execute it, it prints the name. So that's about records. It helps model data carrier classes in a concise way. So that's it just, and there is more to it. And if you would like to learn more about it, then you can check out our Java in-depth course. Thank you and see you in the next Java shot.